Hello everybody, today I'm going to do something slightly different, as I continue to work on my Heinlein Time Enough for Love Lazarus Long video that's taking me so much time. Well, as I was rereading the aforementioned work, the intermissions once again stuck out to me. Now, it's a lengthy book that spans, as the name suggests, quite a bit of time, and these intermissions take the form of excerpts from our hero's notebook. Now, these excerpts are, at once, obvious and challenging, depending on the quotation. So, in the spirit of my 48 Law of Power videos, I decided to give these insights as something of an esoteric challenger for the former. So, sit back, relax, and roll these little thoughts around like the fine brandy they are on the tongue, and I hope you enjoy. Always store beer in a dark place. By the date to date, there is only one animal in the galaxy dangerous to man, man himself, so he must supply his own indispensable competition. He has no enemy to help him. Men are more sentimental than women. It blurs their thinking. Certainly, the game is rigged. Don't let that stop you. If you don't bet, you can't win. Any priest or shaman must be presumed guilty until proven innocent. Always listen to experts. They'll tell you what can't be done and why. Then do it. Get a shot off fast. This upsets him long enough to let you make your second shot perfect. There is no conclusive evidence of life after death, but there's no evidence of any sort against it, and soon enough you'll know. So why fret about it? If it can't be expressed in figures, it's not science. It's an opinion. It has long been known that one horse can run faster than another, but which one? Differences are crucial. A fake fortune teller can be tolerated, but an authentic soothsayer should be shot on sight. Cassandra did not get half the kicking around she deserved. Delusions are often functional. A mother's opinions about her children's beauty, intelligence, goodness, etc. ad nauseum, keep her from drowning them at birth. Most scientists are bottle washers and button sorters. A pacifist male is a contradiction in terms. Most self-described pacifists are not pacifistic. They simply assume false colors. When the wind changes, they hoist the Jolly Roger. Nursing does not diminish the beauty of a woman's breasts. It enhances their charm by making them look lived in and happy. A generation which ignores history has no past and no future. A poet who reads his verse in public may have other nasty habits. What a wonderful world it is that has girls in it. Small change can often be found under seat cushions. History does not record anywhere, at any time, a religion that has any rational basis. Religion is a crutch for people not strong enough to stand up to the unknown without help. But, like dandruff, most people do have a religion, and they spend time and money on it, and they seem to derive considerable pleasure from fiddling with it. It's amazing how much mature wisdom resembles being too tired. If you don't like yourself, you can't like other people. Your enemy is never a villain in his own eyes. Keep this in mind. It may offer you a way to make him your friend. If not, you can kill him without hate and quickly. A motion to adjourn is always in order. No state has an inherent right to survive through conscript troops and, in the long run, no state ever has. Roman matrons used to say to their sons, come back with your shield or on it. Later, this custom declined. So did Rome. Of all the strange crimes that human beings have been legislating out of nothing, blasphemy is the most amazing, with obscenity and indecent exposure fighting it out for second and third place. Cheops Law. Nothing is ever built on schedule or within budget. It's better to copulate than never. All societies are based on rules to protect pregnant women and young children. All else is surplus age, excrescence, adornity, luxury, or folly which can, and must, be dumped in emergency to preserve this prime function. As racial survival is the only universal morality, no other basic is possible. 
Attempts to formulate a perfect society on any foundation other than women and children first is not only witless, it's automatically genocidal. Nevertheless, starry-eyed idealists, all of them male, have tried endlessly and no doubt will keep on trying. All men are created unequal. Money is a powerful aphrodisiac, but flowers work almost as well. A brute kills for pleasure, a fool kills from hate. There's only one way to console a widow, but remember the risk. When the need arises, and it does, you must be able to shoot your own dog. Don't farm it out. That doesn't make it nicer, it makes it worse. Everything in excess. Enjoy the flavor of life. Take big bites. Moderation is for monks. It may be better to be a live jackal than a dead lion, but it's better still to be a live lion, and usually easier. One man's theology is another man's belly laugh. Sex should be friendly, otherwise stick to mechanical toys. It's more sanitary. Men rarely, if ever, manage to dream up a god superior to themselves. Most gods have the manners and morals of a spoiled child. Never appeal to a man's better nature. He may not have one. Invoking his self-interest gives you more leverage. Little girls, like butterflies, need no excuse. You can have peace, or you can have freedom. Don't ever count on having both at once. Avoid making irrevocable decisions while tired or hungry. Circumstances can force your hand, so think ahead. Place your clothes and weapons where you can find them in the dark. An elephant is a mouse built to government specifications. Throughout history, poverty is the normal condition of man. Advances which permit this norm to be exceeded, here and there, now and then, are the work of an extremely small minority, frequently despised, often condemned and almost always opposed by all right-thinking people. Whenever this tiny minority is kept from creating, or, as sometimes happened, is driven out of a society, the people then slip back into abject poverty. This is known as bad luck. In a mature society, a civil servant is semantically equal to civil master. When a place gets crowded enough to require IDs, social collapse is not far away. It's time to go elsewhere. The best thing about space travel is that it makes it possible to go elsewhere. Women are not property, and husbands who think otherwise are living in a dream world. The second best thing about space travel is the distances involved make war very difficult, usually impractical, and almost always unnecessary. This is probably a loss for most people since war is our race's most popular diversion, one which gives purpose and color to dull and stupid lives. But it's a great boon onto the intelligent man who fights only when he must and never for sport. A zygote is a gametes way of producing more gametes. This may be the purpose of the universe. There are hidden contradictions within the minds of people who love nature while deploring the artificialities with which man has spoiled nature. The obvious contradiction lies in their choice of words, which imply that man and his artifacts are not a part of nature, but beavers and their dams are. But the contradictions go deeper than this prima facie absurdity. In declaring his love for the beaver dam, erected by beavers for beaver's purposes, and his hatred for the dams erected by man, for the purposes of man, the naturist reveals his hatred for his own race, his own self-hatred. In the case of naturists, such self-hatred is understandable. They are a sorry lot. But hatred is too strong an emotion to feel towards them. Pity and contempt are the most they rate. As for me, willy-nilly, I am a man, not a beaver. And Homo sapiens is the only race I have, or can have. Fortunately for me, I like being part of a race made up of men and women. It strikes me as a fine arrangement and perfectly natural. Believe it or not, there are naturists who oppose the first flight to old Earth's moon as being unnatural and a despoiling of nature. No man is an island. Much as we feel and act as individuals, our race is a single organism, always growing and branching, which must be pruned regularly to be healthy. This necessity this necessity need not be argued. Anyone with eyes can see that any organism which grows without limit always dies within its own poison. The only rational question is whether pruning is best done before or after birth. Being an incurable sentimentalist, I favor the former of these methods. Killing makes me queasy, even when it's the case of he's dead and I'm alive and that's the way I wanted it to be. But this may be a matter of taste. 
Some shamans think that it's better to be killed in a war, or to die in childbirth, or to starve in misery than to never to have lived at all. They may be right, but I don't have to like it, and I don't. Democracy is based on the assumption that a million men are wiser than one man. How's that again? I missed something. Autocracy is based on the assumption that one man is wiser than a million men. Let's play that over again too. Who decides? Any government will work if authority and responsibility are equal and coordinate. This does not ensure good government, it simply ensures that it will work. But such governments are rare. Most people want to run things, but want no part of the blame. This used to be called the backseat driver syndrome. What are the facts? Again and again and again. What are the facts? Shun wishful thinking, ignore divine revelation, forget what the stars foretell, avoid opinion, care not what the neighbors think, never mind the unguessable verdict of history. What are the facts? And to how many decimal places? You pilot always in an unknowable future. Facts are your single clue. Get the facts. God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnibenevolent. It says so right here on the label. If you have a mind capable of believing all three of these divine attributes simultaneously, I have a wonderful bargain for you. No checks, please. Cash and small bills. Courage is the complement of fear. A man who is fearless cannot be courageous. He's also a fool. The two highest achievements of the human mind are the twin concepts of loyalty and duty. Whenever these two concepts fall into disrepute, get out of there fast. You may possibly save yourself, but it's too late to save that society. It is doomed. People who go broke in a big way never miss meals. It's the poor jerk who is shy, half a slug who must tighten his belt. The truth of a proposition has nothing to do with its credibility, and vice versa. Anyone who cannot cope with mathematics is not fully human. At best, he is a tolerable subhuman who has learned to wear shoes, bathe, and not make messes in the house. Moving parts and rubbing contact require lubrication to avoid excessive wear. Honorifics and formal politeness provide lubrication where people rub together. Often the very young, the untraveled, the naive, the unsophisticated deplore these formalities as empty, meaningless, or dishonest, and scorn to use them. No matter how pure their motives, they thereby throw sand into machinery that does not work too well at its best. A human being should be able to change a diaper, plan an invasion, butcher a hog, con a ship, design a building, write a sonnet, balance accounts, build a wall, set a bone, discomfort the dying, take orders, give orders, cooperate, act alone, solve equations, analyze a new problem, pitch manure, program a computer, cook a tasty meal, fight efficiently, die gallantly. Specialization is for insects. The more you love, the more you can love, and the more intensely you love, nor is there any limit on how many you can love. If a person had time enough, he could love all of the majority who are decent and just. Masturbation is cheap, clean, convenient, and free of any possibility of wrongdoing, and you don't have to go home in the cold. But it is lonely. Beware of altruism. It's based on self-deception, the root of all evil. If tempted by something that feels altruistic, examine your motives and root out that self-deception. Then, if you still want to do it, wallow in it. The most preposterous notion that Homo sapien has ever dreamed up is that the Lord God of creation, shaper and ruler of all the universes, wants the saccharine adoration of his creatures can be swayed by their prayers and becomes petulant if he does not receive this flattery. Yet this absurd fantasy, without a shred of evidence to bolster it, pays all the expenses of the oldest, largest, and least productive industry in all of history. The second most preposterous notion is that copulation is inherently sinful. Writing is not necessarily something to be ashamed of, but do it in private and wash your hands afterwards. $100 placed at 7% interest compounded quarterly for 200 years will increase to more than $100 million, by which time it will be worth nothing. Dear, don't bore him with trivia or burden him with your past mistakes. The happiest way to deal with a man is to never tell him anything he does not need to know. Darling, a true lady takes off her dignity with her clothes and does her whorish best. At other times, you can be as modest and dignified as your persona requires. Everybody lies about sex. 
If men were the automatons that behaviorists claim they are, the behaviorist psychologist could not have invented the amazing nonsense called behaviorist psychology. So, they are wrong from scratch. As clever, and as wrong, as phlogiston chemists. The shamans are forever yakking about their snake oil miracles. I prefer the real McCoy, a pregnant woman. If the universe has any purpose more important than topping the woman you love and making a baby with her hearty help, I've never heard of it. Thou shalt remember the eleventh commandment, and keep it holy. A touchstone to determine the actual worth of an intellectual, find out how he feels about astrology. Taxes are not levied for the benefit of the taxed. There's no such thing as social gambling. Either you are there to cut the other bloke's heart out and eat it, or you're a sucker. If you don't like this choice, don't gamble. When a ship lifts, all bills are paid. No regrets. The first time I was a drill instructor, I was too inexperienced for the job. The things I taught those lads might have gotten some of them killed. War is too serious a matter to be taught by the inexperienced. A competent and self-confident person is incapable of jealousy in anything. Jealousy is invariably a symptom of neurotic insecurity. Money is the sincerest of all flattery. Women love to be flattered. So do men. You live and learn, or you don't live long. Whenever women have insisted on absolute equality with men, they have invariably wound up on the dirty end of the stick. What they are, and what they can do, makes them superior to men, and their proper tactic is to demand these special privileges. All the traffic will bear. They should never settle merely for this equality. For women, equality is clearly a disaster. Peace is an extension of war by political means. Plenty of elbow room is pleasanter, and much safer. One man's magic is another man's engineering, and supernatural is a null word. The phrase, we, or I, or you, simply must, designates something that need not be done. That goes without saying, is a red warning. Of course, means that you had best check it yourself. These small change cliches, these small change cliches, and others like them, when read correctly, are reliable channel markers. Do not handicap your children by making their lives easy. Rub her feet. If you happen to be one of the fretful who can do creative work, never force an idea. You'll abort it if you do. Be patient and you'll give birth to it when the time is right. Learn to wait. Never crowd youngsters about their private affairs, sex especially. When they're growing up, they're all nerve ends all over and resent, quite properly, any invasions of their privacy. Oh sure, they'll make mistakes, but that's their business, not yours. You made your own mistakes, did you not? Never underestimate the power of human stupidity. Always tell her she is beautiful, especially if she's not. If you're part of a society that votes, then do so. There may be no candidates and no measures you want to vote for, but there are certain to be ones that you want to vote against. In case of doubt, vote against. By this rule, you will rarely go wrong. If this is too blind for your taste, consult some well-meaning fool. There's always one around and ask his advice. Then vote the other way. This enables you to be a good citizen, if such is your wish, without spending the enormous amount of time on it that truly intelligent exercise of the franchise requires. Sovereign ingredient for a happy marriage. Pay cash or do without. Interest charges not only eat up a household budget, awareness of debt eats up domestic felicity. Those who refuse to support and defend a state have no claim to protection by that state. Killing an anarchist or a pacifist should not be defined as murder in a legalistic sense. The offense against the state, if any, should be using deadly weapons inside city limits, or creating a traffic hazard, or endangering bystanders, or some other misdemeanor. However, the state may reasonably place a closed season on these exotic asocial animals whenever they are in danger of becoming extinct. An authentic buck pacifist has rarely been seen off of Earth, and it's doubtful that any have survived the trouble there. Regrettable, as they had the biggest mouths and the smallest brains of any of the primates. The small mouth variety of anarchist has spread through the galaxy at the very wave front of the diaspora. There's no need to protect them, but they often shoot back. Another ingredient for a happy marriage, budget the luxuries first. And still another, see to it that she has her own desk and keep your hands off it. And another, in a family argument, if it turns out you are right, apologize at once. God split himself into a myriad of parts that he might have friends. 
This may not be true, but it sounds good, and is no sillier than any other theology. To stay young requires unceasing cultivation of the ability to unlearn old falsehoods. Does record record any case in which the majority was right? When the fox gnaws, smile. A critic is a man who creates nothing, and thereby feels qualified to judge the work of creative men. There's logic to this, he's unbiased. He hates all creative people equally. Money is truthful. If a man speaks of his honor, make him pay cash. Never frighten a little man. He'll kill you. Only a sadistic scoundrel, or a fool, tells the bald truth on social occasions. This sad little lizard told me that he was a brontosaurus on his mother's side. I did not laugh. People who boast of ancestry often have little else to sustain them. Humoring them costs nothing and adds to happiness in a world in which happiness is always in short supply. In handling a stinging insect, move very slowly. To be matter-of-fact about the world is to blunder into fantasy, and dull fantasy at that, as the real world is strange and wonderful. Touch is the most fundamental sense. A baby experiences it all over before he is born and long before he learns to use sight, hearing, or taste, and no human ever ceases to need it. Keep your children short on pocket money, but long on hugs. Secrecy is the beginning of tyranny. The greatest productive force is human selfishness. Be wary of strong drink, it can make you shoot at tax collectors and miss. The profession of shaman has many advantages. It offers high status with a safe livelihood free of work in the dreary, sweaty sense. In most societies, it offers legal privileges and immunities not granted to other men. But it is hard to see how a man who has been given a mandate from on high to spread tidings of joy to all mankind can be seriously interested in taking up a collection to pay his salary. It causes one to suspect that the shaman is on the moral level of any other man, but it's lovely work if you can stomach it. A whore should be judged by the same criteria as other professionals offering services for pay, such as dentists, lawyers, hairdressers, physicians, plumbers, etc. Is she professionally competent? Does she give good measure? Is she honest with her clients? Is it possible that the percentage of honest and competent whores is higher than that of plumbers and much higher than that of lawyers, and enormously higher than that of professors? Minimize your thurblings until it becomes automatic. This doubles your effective lifetime and thereby gives you time to enjoy butterflies and kittens and rainbows. Have you noticed how much they look like orchids? Lovely. Expertise in one field does not carry over into other fields, but experts often think so. The narrower their field of knowledge, the more likely they are to think so. Never try to outstubborn a cat. Tilting at windmills hurts you more than the windmills. Yield to temptation, it may not pass your way again. Waking a person unnecessarily should not be considered a capital crime. For a first offense, that is. Go to hell, or other insult direct, is all the answer a Snoopy question rates. The correct way to punctuate a sentence that starts, of course, it's none of my business, but, is to place a period after the word but. Don't use excessive force in supplying such morons with a period. Cutting his throat is only a momentary pleasure and is bound to get you talked about. A man does not insist on physical beauty in a woman who builds up his morale. After a while, he realizes that she is beautiful. He just hadn't noticed it at first. A skunk is better company than a person who prides himself on being frank. All's fair in love and war. What a contemptible lie. Beware of the black swan fallacy. Deductive logic is tautological. There is no way to get a new truth out of it, and it manipulates false statements as readily as true ones. If you fail to remember this, it can trip you, with perfect logic. The designers of the earliest computers called this the Geigo Law, garbage in, garbage out. Inductive logic is much more difficult, but can produce new truths. A practical joker deserves applause for his wit according to its quality, bastinado. For exceptional wit, one might grant keelhauling, but staking him out to an anthill should be reserved for the very wittiest. Natural laws have no pity. On the planet Tranquil, around KM 849-CHIO, lives a little animal known as a nafen. It is herbivorous, and has no natural enemies, and is easily approached, and may be petted. Sort of a six-legged puppy with scales. Stroking it is very pleasant. It wiggles its pleasure and broadcasts euphoria in some band that humans can detect. It's worth the trip. 
Someday some bright boy will figure out how to record this broadcast, then some smart boy will see commercial angles, and not long after it will be regulated and taxed. In the meantime, I've faked that name and catalog number. It's several thousand light years off in another direction. Selfish of me. Freedom begins when you tell Mrs. Grundy to go fly a kite. Take care of the cojones and the frijoles will take care of themselves. Try to have getaway money, but don't be a fanatic about it. If everybody knows such and such, then it ain't so by at least 10,000 to one. Political tags such as royalist, communist, democrat, populist, fascist, liberal, conservative, and so forth are never basic criteria. The human race divides politically into those who want people to be controlled and those who have no such desire. The former are idealists, acting from highest motives for the greatest good of the greatest number. The latter are surly curmudgeons, suspicious and lacking in altruism. But they are more comfortable neighbors than the other sort. All cats are not gray after midnight. Endless variety. Sin lies only in hurting other people unnecessarily. All other sins are invented nonsense. Hurting yourself is not sinful, just stupid. Being generous is inborn. Being altruistic is a learned perversity. No resemblance. It is impossible for a man to love his wife wholeheartedly without loving all women somewhat. I suppose that the converse must be true of women. You can go wrong by being too skeptical as readily as by being too trusting. Formal courtesy between husband and wife is even more important than it is between strangers. Anything free is worth what you pay for it. Don't store garlic near other victuals. Climate is what we expect. Weather is what we get. Pessimist by policy, optimist by temperament. It is possible to be both. How? By never taking an unnecessary chance and by minimizing risks you can't avoid. This permits you to play the game happily and untroubled by the certainty of the outcome. Do not confuse duty with what other people expect of you. They are utterly different. Duty is a debt you owe yourself to fulfill obligations you have assumed voluntarily. Paying that debt can entail anything from years of patient work to an instant willingness to die. Difficult it may be, but the reward is self-respect. But there is no reward at all for doing what other people expect of you, and to do so is not merely difficult but impossible. It's easier to deal with a footpad than it is with the leech who wants just a few minutes of your time, please. This won't take long. Time is your total capital, and the minutes of your life are painfully few. If you allow yourself to fall into the vice of agreeing to such requests, they quickly snowball to the point where these parasites will use up 100% of your time and squawk for more. So learn to say no and to be rude about it when necessary. Otherwise, you will not have time to carry out your duty or to do your own work and certainly no time for love and happiness. The termites will nibble away at your life and leave none of it for you. This rule does not mean that you must not do a favor for a friend or even a stranger, but let the choice be yours. Don't do it because it's expected of you. I came, I saw, she conquered. The original Latin seems to have been garbled. A committee is a life form with six or more legs and no brain. Animals can be driven crazy by placing too many in too small a pen. Homo sapiens is the only animal that voluntarily does this to himself. Don't try to have the last word. You might get it. And that's it for me, ladies and gents. Maybe you put this on in the background and listen to it while you're doing something else, and maybe you took something from it. I hope you did. Some of the quotes are more or less out of out of context, including the one, let's say, about Mrs. Grundy. That's all explained in the context of the story, and I probably will cover at least the principle that he epitomizes in Miss Grundy in my video. As usual, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Stay safe, good luck, and goodbye.